a number of solar manufacturers have announced that they're opening up US-based manufacturing facilities to take advantage of the domestic production provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act. According to a new report by EIA, renewable energy now accounts for about 25% of all of the electricity on the grid. And according to another report, renewable energy has saved the uh, consumers in Texas about $28 billion over the last 12 years. I'm Jay Warmke with Blue Rock Station, and this is the news from the solar industry for the week of October 31st. Now, First Solar has announced that they're opening up a research and development facility at their Perrysburg, Ohio facility. Uh, First Solar is the only uh, U.S. headquartered producer of thin film solar panels. They primarily focus on uh, utility scale, and of course they are the largest producer of U.S. Um, solar panels. Uh, they have also, in addition to this R&D facility, announced that they're going to be investing about $1.2 billion in domestic production to bring up their capacity to about 10 gigawatts of production per year. Helene Solar has announced that they're opening up a 420 megawatt facility at their Mountain Iron Minnesota facility. Now this is next door to a 150 megawatt Canadian solar facility there in Minnesota. It makes it the second largest polysilicon um, manufacturing facility in the United States. It will add about 60 employees to the Minnesota workforce of this company, bringing that up to about 100 employees within uh, that state, within the Gopher State. Okay, Mission Solar Energy has announced that they intend to expand to about one gigawatt of production. Their facility that's located down near San Antonio, Texas, is actually located on the former Brooks Air Force Base. Uh, when the CEO was making this announcement, he noted that this facility, as well as many of the others, not only taking advantage of the Investment Retirement Reduction Act, but also noted that currently solar accounts for about 5% of all of the energy uh, on the U.S. grid, but it has to get up to about 40% by 2035, just to meet the targets that have been established by the government and the industry. And Enphase has announced that they're going to be opening up probably about six new uh, manufacturing facilities in the U.S. They're doing this to take advantage of the Inve uh, Inflation Reduction Act provision, where for microinverters, they can receive an 11 cent per watt production tax credit for domestically manufactured um, product here in, in the U.S. Uh, according to a recent report by EIA, that's the Energy Information Administration, uh, renewables now account for about 25% of all of the electricity on the grid. This is an increase of about 17.5% over the same period last year. Now, if we break this down, you'll see that solar accounts for about 5% on the grid, wind about 10%, Hydro is about 6.7%, and then geothermal and biomass round out the renewables with an additional 3%. When looking over time, about five years ago, coal uh, accounted for about 30.3% of all of the electricity generated on the U.S. grid. That is now down to about 19%. Nuclear energy has similarly declined. Uh, it's gone from about 19.5% down to about 17.5%. Now, uh, natural gas is still the, the big dog here. Uh, natural gas accounts for about 38% of all of the electricity on the U.S. grid. Now, a report that was just issued by Ideasmith has found that on average, consumers save in the state of Texas about $925 million per month because they're using renewable energy to a great extent. That amounts to about $7.5 billion for 2022 alone. And over a 12-year period, that mounts up to about $28 billion. 
Now, part of the reason for this, of course, is that the savings are due to the escalating cost of coal and natural gas. In fact, natural gas rose from about $3.64 per million BTU in 2021 up to about $6.21 per million BTU, or almost double, and coal prices rose from about $3.26 to about $3.72. So the savings due to renewable energy in that state are escalating uh, as these prices of fossil fuels become more volatile. And that's the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.